Hello, my name is Dan Holm, and in this short how-to video, I'm going to explain how you can deploy navigation links to SharePoint sites using group policy. So here's the scenario. You got sites? Well, I do in my organization. I've got an intranet homepage, a site that I want users to be able to get to regularly, document libraries and lists that store content, and team sites where teams collaborate. Let's take a look. First, let me introduce you to Contoso's intranet. Users at Contoso can navigate to intranet.contoso.com and they'll find the company's published content available for all employees. One of the sites we have off of our intranet is a site called SharePoint. It is what we call SharePoint Central and this is a site where users can go for information, training, policies, and service requests related to our SharePoint service. By the way, this site is something that I recommend you implement in your organization as well, a SharePoint site about SharePoint. And then, of course, Teams have collaborative sites. So we have a web application called teams.contoso.com, underneath which each department has a site. I'm a consultant, so when I go to the consulting team site, I can collaborate with my peers in the consulting department. At this point, we have a fairly typical structure, but users have to navigate the structure themselves. They have to either type in URLs or create favorites. Now, of course, users do have the ability to change their home page, add a folder to their favorites, or add a link to their links bar, now called the favorites bar, which is this bar across the top of the screen. Now that we understand our current state, we can define what we want to see happen. I'd like to see our Internet homepage be the homepage for Internet Explorer, so that whenever you, a user opens Internet Explorer, they get the Internet homepage. For resource sites, like our SharePoint Central site, I want that to be easily accessible, perhaps off, right off of Favorites. For document libraries and lists, I want those in Favorites too, but there might be a lot of them, so it might be helpful to group them in folders. And finally, for a user's team site, I want them to be able to get to it very quickly. And so it might make sense to have a link in the favorites bar to provide really quick access. Now that we've defined our requirements, we can move on to implementing those requirements using group policy preferences. Group policy preferences are a feature of Windows and Active Directory. They're easy to use. And in fact, we can define our home page with what are called internet settings preferences and we can define shortcuts for all other sites using shortcut preferences. We'll put some shortcuts in the favorites folder, we'll put other shortcuts in the links folder, and rather than just looking at the slide, let's dive in and do it. I'm now logged on as an administrator of our Active Directory environment, and within the Group Policy Management Console, I'm going to create a new group policy object linked to the domain. We'll call the group policy object SharePoint Configuration. The name totally doesn't matter. What matters is that it's linked to the domain, so any settings I put in this group policy object will apply to all users in the domain. So let's go ahead and edit this group policy object, and the first thing we're going to configure is the home page for our users. Because this affects users, it's under user configuration, and this particular setting is one of the group policy preferences under control panel settings, specifically internet settings. So I'm going to create a new Internet Explorer 8 settings collection, and we will configure the home page as http intranetcontosocom Simple enough. I'm now deploying my home page to every user in my domain. Now for other sites, we're going to deploy favorites and links in the favorites bar, and these are both done by deploying shortcut preferences. So I can create a new shortcut preference that is a URL in the Explorer Favorites folder pointing to our SharePoint Central site, which is http slash intranet.contoso.com sites SharePoint. And we'll give it a friendly name like SharePoint Central. And let's take a quick look at what I've done here. I've specified that we're going to have a favorite with this name pointing to this location. It will be a URL, obviously, and it's stored in the Explorer Favorites folder. 
And just to emphasize that even though it says Explorer Favorites, that is the Internet Explorer Favorites folder. Click OK, and that shortcut will now be deployed to every user to whom this group policy object is scoped. Now I'm going to create a second group policy object that allows me to get to a specific document library in my consulting team site. So I'm going to create a new shortcut. Again, it's a URL in the Explorer Favorites folder. And it goes to http colon slash slash teams.contoso.com departments consulting. And this document library is called Special Projects. So this is the full URL to that document library. We'll give it a friendly name Consulting Special Projects Library. And we have a shortcut very similar to what we already did with a friendly name, a target, a URL type, and stored in the Explorer Favorites folder. But I want to uh, start categorizing and organizing favorites within the Favorites folder. So here's a little tip. If I include in the name a folder name like SharePoint Sites backslash, when this shortcut gets deployed, Windows will create a subfolder in Favorites with that name, and then will create the favorite inside that folder. So this is a way you can deploy shortcuts in groups within subfolders of the favorites folder. Now the other tip here is that I don't want every user to get this favorite. The only users who need this favorite are consultants themselves. And one of the great features of group policy preferences is item level targeting that allows me to filter this setting to specific users. So I'm going to target this setting to members of a specific security group specifically my consulting group in Active Directory. So I already have this group defined in Active Directory. I'm just using it as a filter for this setting. So now only users who are a member of that group will get this particular favorite added to their favorites folder. And last but not least, for consultants, I want to make it super easy for them to get to their team site. So I'm going to add a URL, but this time instead of putting it in the favorites folder, I'm going to put it in the Explorer links bar which is the favorites bar across the top of Internet Explorer. The URL, teams.contoso.com, departments, consulting, and the name, consulting team site. Again, I'm going to target this so that it only applies to consultants. So members of the security group, consulting. Voila. Group policy settings are refreshed when a user logs on and at an interval of approximately every 90 minutes. I could also run the GP update command to force a group policy refresh. But I just logged on, the settings have applied, so when I open Internet Explorer, we should see that it opens up to the home page of the Internet. Additionally, when I click the Favorites folder, we see the SharePoint Central favorite that we put in the root of the Favorites folder. We see the SharePoint Sites folder and the favorite we created within that to the Special Projects document library. And so I can get quickly to my team site, I can use the shortcut that we put in the links bar. So those are some great options you have for improving the navigability, usability, and therefore the adoption of your SharePoint implementation. As an administrator, you can deploy navigation links with group policy preferences right into the user interface and make it easy for users to get to the locations they need. Now this just scratches the surface. There's so much more you can do to centrally administer and improve your user's experience with SharePoint. But hopefully this was at least enough to wet your whistle. Once again, my name is Dan Holm. I hope you've enjoyed this tip. My email address is at the bottom of the slide, and I'm more than happy to answer questions for you. Best of luck and all the success in the world with your SharePoint implementation.